Welcome to Inside Notes, the making of spectacle. This is a story of a music television show conceived in Toronto that critics around the world have called groundbreaking. In the era of the soundbite, is there room for an in-depth forum about music? I'm David Furnish, one of the producers and creators of Spectacle. And for the next hour, we want to take you behind the scenes so you can get an inside look at one of the most original music programs ever created. This is also a tale of two cities, and it begins in New York. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, on Spectacle, I've shined a light in many famous eyes and insisted that they confess. Mr. Herbie Hancock. Mr. Smokey Robinson. Jacob Dillon. Mr. James Taylor. Rufus Wainwright. Roseanne Cash. Mr. Bruce Springsteen. Spectacles executive producer, Sir Elton John. Spectacle is deep and meaningful because you get to find out what makes an artist work, what he's influenced by, um, the pain they go through, the inspirations they go through, um, the process of writing songs. And I wanted something on television that was going to last for, for a long time. You're the This show has a kind of elegance in a way. I don't really know another word for it. This is just all about a celebration of music and looking at the artist and looking at how they got there and, and, and why they did it. And, and it's all very personal and it's celebrating really great artists. As you can see, the show has really struck a chord with people. Right now, the whole production is on the move between Toronto and New York as we start making new shows. Now, I'm going to take you backstage into the writing rooms into the dressing rooms and on set as we see television history being made. You know, secret. I'm gonna kind of bust your bubble a little bit there. <laughs> Spectacle's different because you have a peer talking to a peer. You've got a musical artist talking to a musical artist. Some of those records that you talk about were recorded in England, and we always got the Motown sound. I love the the reverence that Elvis Costello has for um, musical history, for where he comes from. This consistent feeling sort of willingness to credit those who came before him. It's so rare to find in someone so accomplished who is himself a kind of genius. Oh, yeah. Elvis exploded in 1977 with his debut hit record, My Aim Is True, which landed on the top of record collections around the world, including mine. Over the next three decades, he wrote and played almost every genre of music, from punk to opera. You know, Elvis is a perfect host for this because there's very few people who can kind of like talk to all of these people about their career in like a really intelligent way, but then also sort of get up and, and sing with them and play with them. Let me tell you about your blood and so kid. Elvis Costello is a great wit, a great raconteur, uh, really has an encyclopedic knowledge of, of music, has worked in almost every genre you can imagine. But I worship Elvis Costello. He's the guy. He's the coolest one. <laughs> 